Howdy guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Andy Tay, if you guys are new here, that's who I am. And if you're not, welcome back. Today is part two of our clip art series. Today I'm showing you guys how to take our hand-drawn watercolor stickers and digitize them. This works for pictures. You can take a picture of a flower and digitize it. You can take a picture of anything and turn it into a piece of clip art. So today I am using my watercolor as an example, but you can also take pictures of things edit them on your phone or edit them in PicMonkey. And we're gonna use PicMonkey because it is super user-friendly. And I personally, after trying it on Photoshop, like it better. So let's get going. Guys, welcome to part two of creating your own digital sticker clip arts, hand-drawn clip art. Um, in this portion, we're gonna do the digitizing of them and we're gonna use PicMonkey. Now I did film this in Photoshop, but I decided after doing this, I think PicMonkey is faster, easier, and user-friendly. So I think you guys are gonna thank me for doing it through PicMonkey, which is free. Um, and I know that some designers are gonna be cringing that I'm using it, but I also know how to use Photoshop and I think that for this, it's the best thing. So I just went over to PicMonkey and we're going to edit an image. In our last pic, our last video, we created the image and took the picture of the image. And now we are just going to import it. Um, you can see right here, I actually brightened this in Photoshop before I came in here, but we're going to start from scratch with um, one that I did just right on my phone and um, so that you guys know that you can do it all in PicMonkey if you want to. Okay, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna brighten this up by changing the curves on it. Now, PicMonkey has come a long way uh, because this is a really advanced feature that I love using. So I love to grab about three quarters of the way up, not all the way, not all the way up, not halfway up, and I just love dragging that kind of towards the top. And what that does is it really creates those whites to be really white and the blacks to be, um, or actually just the whites to be really white. And then I like to come about the opposite direction down and go down, which creates the blacks to be really black. It's not the same as changing the contrast. It's a little different and I really love doing it. So now I'm gonna click apply. Now you can do that in Photoshop, just fine, super easy. But here's where PicMonkey takes the cake, I believe, because in crop mode, we can work on one piece and then we can go in and do another piece over and over and over. I was doing this in Photoshop and I'd have to save the image, come back, reopen it, redo this, because we're gonna turn each little color picture, not all in this video, I'm just gonna show you one, um, but we're gonna, a, you know, I'd hope that you would want to turn every single one into a clip art. And in part three, I'm going to show you how to turn those into a, another sticker sheet and use those over and over and over again. So right now we're just going to focus on turning each one into its own little piece of clip art. So we're going to go to crop and what we want to do is work on one piece at a time. So I'm going to do this little dull whip. Uh, for the video sake, actually, I think I'm going to do the bow because the bow is really easy and it won't take as much time, but you'll get the gist. So I'm going to apply the crop and I'm going to zoom in so that I can see this. Now, under layers, we're going to convert the background to a layer so that we can erase it. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to erase on this. Um, Another thing is this photo is a little lower resolution because I screenshot it because I actually took this with my iPhone, which has the HEIC and it doesn't, it's not really compatible with a lot of programs. So I ended up screenshotting this. So just make sure that you're taking pictures in JPEG if you wanna do this and keep the resolution high. Um, I don't think we're gonna have that big of an issue with these because I'm using small stickers but um, just for future reference. So now I'm gonna go over to erase and I'm gonna make my the hardness 100% and what that does is make sure that my eraser tool is has no fuzzy on the outside, which will help create strong cut lines. And I'm gonna turn the size down. I'm gonna zoom in and I'm gonna start by 
cleaning around the bow. But I wanna try to do this in solid swoop motions so that it creates solid cut lines. And so, again, I don't like that I did that. So I'm gonna just create one solid swoopy line. If you leave a little white in the background, you can just go a little bit um, off of it if you want a white background on your clip art. I want my clip art to be colored all the way to the edge. So I'm trying my hardest to make clean cut lines um, so that when these cut on a machine, it won't be crazy. So I'm just letting go every so often. If I make a mistake, I'll undo and start over, but I wanna be as smooth as possible and you don't wanna go too far because if you make a mistake, you have to undo it and that will be, um, you'll have to go back a lot and start over. So I'm just gonna do most of the like, if I have like a big curve right here, I'll do this in a couple, but I'll try to stay going in one solid motion and this doesn't take too long and I'm not even using a mouse, I'm using my finger pad on my Mac. So this can be done with a stylus if you wanna be more precise, but the better you get. And then if I really don't like how the watercolor came out of the design, I could clean that up a little bit, which I don't mind it, but for some reason on this bow, I don't like it that much. So I might clean this up just a little bit so that it looks like it's not so watercolored outside of the line. So I'm just gonna clean that up a tiny bit. And then of course, if I don't like that I did that, I can undo it if I wanted it to be a little bit more messy. Like I might even erase some of that just to give it a little cleaned up line. Okay, so now that we have the clean lines, we can make our brush a little bigger and go in, not too big, because we don't wanna go into the bow and we can just start on the way out and make sure you get all of it erased. Um, Cause the Cricut or whatever machine you pick might pick it up and you don't wanna cut out little pieces in the background. So there we have the bow and then we can just save it as a PNG because the background's transparent. Okay, so this is why I love this program over Photoshop is I'm gonna go back to crop and you're gonna see that the original photo is still there and I can move the crop feature around my next piece and click apply. And then I can go in and work on this piece. So just like that, I can click on it, click erase. My brush is set to where I wanted it, except I need to change the size back down. And I'm gonna have to go in a little bit smaller with this one because I wanna get really tight into these little nooks and crannies. So I can get these nooks and crannies and start on the outside first, and then I can make my brush a little bit bigger. So you can go in on all the nooks and crannies like here and here, and then I'm gonna just go along this outline right here, and now I can go around the edges. If there's any spots I want to erase, I can do that. Um, this might be, a good size. And again, if we're using the Cricut, we can use a bleed on this. So if we don't go all the way to the edge, we'll still get a good little thing, but I don't even know if that made sense, a good little thing, but we can get um, a good, we don't have to get all the way close to it. And the bleed will allow the color to go to the edge if, if you've used the Cricut before. Um, other than that, you can also just use these and we don't want, so see, whoops, I'm gonna undo that. We don't want white as much as possible unless you want a white background. I can show you how to put a white background on this as well or a different color background even if you want your stickers to have um, some type of background. What you would do is get this down to a PNG format and under layers, so let's go here, let's go to layers and can we make just a new blank layer? I don't think we can, but we can make a basic shape and we could put a shape behind this. And what you could do is um, manually draw, so you'd erase all of this. Let's go back to the bow so I can show you on the bow. So let's go back to the crop tool and let's go back over to the bow to the bow, to the bow. 
me just click enter for some reason it's having an issue okay so now that I have this square layer and he's like completely somewhere else I'm gonna put another square just to show you what I'm talking about let's do a, a circle so you could put the circle and move it behind this you could cut this out on a circle um, or you could change this color to be you know pink or even red if you want it to be a red background and you would erase just around you know like so instead of um that's way too big uh so you could erase you know around this so that it has kind of a border i would go in and do it a lot smoother and a lot slower just like we did around the bow and you could get these colors you could also change the color if you don't like it if you want like a pink background you could have a little pink background and then we would just save that as a png so that's how you would have a colored background and then your cricut would cut along this line instead of right up against that bow so in part three of this we're going to take these clip arts and we are going to turn we're going to then take them and make our custom designed sticker sheets so that we can move them around all over and we don't have to do the same sheets over and over. So I hope you guys enjoy part three of this video. And I hope you guys enjoyed how to make clip art in Pig Monkey.